Alright, so uh, in this video I'm going to talk about 1D kinematics and projectile motion. Um, if you are here from County College of Morris, then proceed to this time here for your 10 minute introduction to um, projectile motion, but given I am putting this on YouTube publicly, I thought it best to include the 1D kinematics instead of saying in a previous lecture that I have not created. Um, so uh, if, you, if you are here for both, Please stay. If you're here just for the projectile motion, proceed to time. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I can make sure I don't screw this up this time. Right screen. There we go. All right. So, so 1D kinematics start. The 1D kinematics we like to deal with. Start out with that. Ex what am I putting on? That one. Start out with acceleration. Acceleration given by the letter A in units of meters per second square is a constant. So then if we were to plot that out on acceleration versus time plot, time go there, acceleration goes here, acceleration of time goes there, and it's constant. A goes there and then the, goes for some amount of time T. This area here, the area of this rectangle, has units of it, um, for, for has units of velocity, a meter per second, and is given by the letter V. So the area of this velocity, V, is equal to A times T, base times height. And then we will add to that some initial v naught that we do not know. If you are in calculus, velocity is equal to the acceleration is equal to an integral over acceleration of time dt. So this is our time, our change, but uh, a change in time, and this is our acceleration. This is our integral. Um, if you are in uh, in algebra base then we just have to deal with some a and change in time. So here are a, a time times our time. And then as our calculus based students know, we need to add a, when we get done evaluating this thing from between zero and t, put our t primes in here for proper form, we have to have a plus a unknown constant. Um, so there's our v is equal to a t, is, yeah, a t plus v naught t. Most times you'll see it right now as V naught plus A T, like so. Do 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 do. Yes. Good. Um, this is one of our equations of motion, uh, one of our kinematic equations. That I call it our the velocity equation. Um, then we need to do this integral thing again. Um, so we have a. Let's try that again. Let's try to make that vertical axis somewhat vertical. Yeah, not good yet. There we go. So we have a amount of time. We have a v of t, and we plot on it v naught. V naught goes there, and then a t goes there. And so this bit here on the end, this is a t, and of course this is v not high and we go t out um, doo -doo -doo. so this is a position this is a po position there we go which is can be given in x y z r any of those letters will account for position um, but most times we just deal with one axis and so that's usually given as x and so then, um, for our calculus-based students, that is an integral between zero and t of a v of t prime dt prime. But integrals are just areas, just the area of this trapezoid here. And so for the rest of uh, for our algebra-based friends, that turns out to be 
well, the area of this block here is just like this area here, base times height. So that's uh, V naught T plus, and then this triangle here has a base of T and a height of AT, and so that's a one half AT squared. And just as before, where we had a constant of integration, we need to add a constant of integration for our position being X naught. Uh, most times, so most times you'll find this written as x naught plus v naught t dragon plus one half a t squared, and so this com comes out to be our um, this is our a our position formula here. So velocity equation, position equation. Um, there are two more equations. I'm not sure if I know how to do derive properly, and so we'll find out here if I can do that. Um, I'm going to start with this one here with our velocity. I'm going to solve that for t, so v minus v naught over a is equal to t. Double check, make sure our units work out right. So that's a meter per second minus a meter per second divided by meter per second squared meters cancel, cancel each other and then this inverse second square comes up on top so it's a second square divided by second and that's a second so that is indeed a time very good um, and then so this t now goes into here and so we get that x minus x naught is equal to v naught times our time V minus V naught over acceleration plus one half A V minus V naught over acceleration squared. And hopefully, I can simplify this down. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure I'm on the right trail here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I believe I can. I'm on the right trail. I'm about to find out. So let's see here. Um, so we have v v naught minus v naught squared over a plus one half. Um, a goes on the bottom. Square out the top here, and so that comes out to be v square minus two v v naught plus uh, v naught square square over a singular a. Um, now I sh can combine things together. Um, so this half with that two there becomes one. This is one, and that's minus one, so those cancel each other, thusly. Um, let's see here. And then, right, how best to continue on with this exercise. Um, so this is a, so let's see here, one over a. Everything's got one over a. And you know what? I'm going to move that one over a. So multiply both sides by one over a, and so I get a times x minus x naught. And then, so then I have a, let's see here, that's v square. Uh, that's a half. Uh, let's back up. So that's a half of v square. v square. And then this is a minus, and that's a plus. So let's see here, let's see here, do do do, right? Now this is a minus one, and this is a plus half. So that leaves me with minus a half v naught square. Multiply both sides by two, and so I end up with let's see here, v square, and move this to the other side. Add that to the other side is equal to v naught square plus 2ax minus x naught. I am delighted. That is the equation I am looking for. Um, so let's see, this is a, so that's our velocity equation, position equation.
There we go. There is position equation. I'm going to call this energy conservation. Conservation equation. Because as we will find out in because if you are to continue this into further um, studies, you would find out that this equation can be derived from energy conservation. So I will leave that as is. We'll have derived it using algebra here. Um, and then let's see if I can figure out this last one. I haven't derived this one before. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, mm -hmm. I need to eliminate. So the equation I'm looking for, I'll tell you what it is, and then we'll see if I can't figure out how to make it. So distance traveled is equal to v over v naught, v plus v naught half t. So it's basically the average velocity times time is equal to distance traveled. Um, that should be derivable from this equation here, v is equal to v naught plus a t in some way. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, is it? Let's see here. Um, you know what? I think I think it's actually this equation here and this one here where I solved this one for acceleration instead. So acceleration is equal to v minus v naught over time. And then if I put that into this equation here, I think that'll actually work out. X minus X naught plus V, is, nope, back up, is equal to V naught T plus one half A, here it is, V minus V naught over T uh, times our time squared. All right. So v naught t minus that cancels with that, and so we get minus one half uh, v minus v naught times time, and then so minus goes minus, and that becomes a plus. Um, Huh. That doesn't look right. Huh. Weird. So that is, um, so that's three halves. V naught minus one half V all times T. Huh. Well, that's not what I was expecting at all. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I missed a step. I missed a step. I can see the step I missed. Plus goes here, not minus. Ah, oh, fix that problem. All right, try again. Uh, there's a square. Cancel the square with that little number. On. Okay. All right, let's try again. So, um, so yeah, that definitely works out the way it's supposed to. So, uh, v naught t minus half of v naught t here. So that becomes one half v naught plus one half of that V there times time. And that's exactly what we got. Ta-da, there we go. Very good, much better. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, now that I've done that, now that I've derived these equations, I shall now get rid of them all. Um, and reveal to you that I have previously written 
that set of equations there. So here's our derived equations. There's our position equation, our velocity equation, our energy conservation equation, and then the average velocity equation. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay. All right, having just derived the 1D equation, kinematic equations, um, <clears throat> we're going to do uh, ballistic motion. And so to do that, we are working in two dimensions. And so we have to turn these 1D equations into 2D, like so. And so we end up with these vector, vector position and velocity equations here, and this average velocity equation here. And then for, um, and then we have to put the um, do our velocity squared or velocity dot velocity so that this is a scalar quantity here that we're working with. <coughs> what we find when we do our 2D motion is that 2, 2D and 3D equations, we're going to 2D in this class, equations are 1D equations, um, our, 1D equa our 1D equation problems that have been linked by time. Alternatively, we know, another way to look at this is that these 2D and 3D equations, 2D and 3D problems, are just composed of several 1D equations, equation problems. So to look at that, um, I have prepared a previous, I have previously prepared this particular question, where we take a particle from five meters up and we throw it with a velocity of uh, 20, 20, there we go and our initial velocity of 12 meters per second and an angle of 30 degree <coughs> 30 degrees write that properly it's like 30 degree angle there we go and it's going to go out with no other forces other than gravity acting on it and it'll hit the ground at some point I would like to know the time of impact the distance traveled or the range distance traveled there we go and the speed of impact speed at impact So I like to know T, X, and V magnitude, like so. <clears throat> so the first step to this set of questions here is to look at how long it will be in the air for. So um, point of impact, uh, so using our position equation, we find that we're going to hit the ground at zero meters starting from 5 meters up with the initial velocity of 12 meters per second cosine 30 degrees times time minus our gravity 9.8 meters per second squared half t squared punching that into our quadratic equation we find that time is equal to minus 0.569 seconds and one point seven nine seconds this first time is what happens when the ball travels backwards through time to hit the ground on the other side and so we don't care about it we care about the 1.79 seconds so 1.79 seconds goes there time uh, distance traveled <clears throat> using the same equation except going out we find that x is equal to uh, velocity in the horizontal direction 12 meters per second sine uh oh this is all wrong that's a uh, right nope yes sine is the vertical direction sine is our vertical component we need the cosine over here cosine of 30 degrees goes there times our time 1.79 seconds and find the distance traveled is 18 point where you go 18.6 meters 18.6 meters. And then we want to know the speed of impact. 
So uh, we know both components in this case. So v x is equal to equal to v naught x plus no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So that is equal to 12 meters per second cosine 30 degrees. And that is 10.39 meters per second. For our horizontal, for our vertical direction, there are two ways to do it. Um, I would recommend for this particular case using our velocity equation. Um, so that's v naught y plus a t. So that's 12 meters per second. Our vertical component sine of 30 degrees minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 1.79 seconds, like so. Punch that into the calculators and we find that it comes out to be um, minus 11.54 meters per second. And so, so our v, our velocity, our speed here, v is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. And that works out to be uh, 15.6 meters per second. 15.6 meters. So the reason why I recommend going this order here, using this equation, our velocity equation, instead of our energy conservation equation, is because the energy conservation equation can be abused. It can go sour, or it can be used uh, poorly. Uh, so we can say that V y is equal to v naught y squared plus 2 times minus 9.8. Let's go ahead and put uh, everything in. Uh, so that's 12 times sine of 30 degrees squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 9.8 times minus 5 coming down all under the square root and this also equals this uh, this equals 11.54 right yeah whatever 54 meters per second that does work what often happens is that students will um, confuse their directions and so they will say stuff like <clears throat> um, if they if they are not in the if you're not in the habit of keeping track of what it is you are doing um, I have seen students go x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half one half a t square and they'll say right um, x is over here and x naught is here so they'll say x naught there and they'll say x is over here and uh, v naught is going off that direction as noted and uh, and uh, acceleration is down so let's go uh, down this way and um, to do out going that way and that one going this way and this one going that way and then all of a sudden the good t is equal to whatever number it is and it's completely incorrect because these this is a vector equation here and all these and all these individual values are magnitudes pointing in strange directions and they get the wrong answer coming out the other side and goes with Sam Hill but then they'll go over here and they'll say right <clears throat> v square v v equals the square root of v naught square plus 2 ad and they'll and if they do it right they can say right this is going down that's going down um, the square doesn't matter so that gets rid of the, the velocity the vector information and so that's going this way <coughs> and this is going whatever direction it's going so this is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 5 um, everything works out, right? Yes. Uh, and they'll come up with the 15.6 over here. And they go, why are these equal? But these are not, this doesn't work. And so the, re the reason for this, so the reason that I'm saying you need to pay attention is that these are vector equations over here that things go poorly. And But this here, until we get to our energy conservation, this here um, if, if I see it, I'm going to be counting it wrong. 
because uh, because you can get in the wrong habit and do stuff like this. But it works out because of energy conservation. Um, so anyhow, I haven't given my warning. Um, let's take a look at these numbers here and find out exactly how we did. Um, so um, Levi said distance of 18.6 meters. The 19 is about here. So yeah, that was about 18.6 meters there. And so I did punch it into Excel, plot it out. Uh, five there, 18.6 is there. Uh, time in the air, 1.79, seven, six seconds, something like that. Um, there we are. 1.79 seconds is just a little bit short, a little bit long for 1.8, right in between, about what we're expecting. Very good for our time. Um, speed is not known by Excel in this case. Yeah, yeah. So we did well with getting these correct answers here. Yay. Um, and that concludes. Bye.